So I'm always on the lookout for a new terminal emulator simply because I like trying them. I think that terminal emulators are cool. They make me look like a nerd, which I are one. And it's just, I do a lot of my work in the terminal. So the tool that I use to do all my work there really does matter. So today we're going to be taking a look at one that has been recommended to me many times before, and that's WESTERM. Now WESTERM is written in Rust, so if you are a Rust fan, this may be a terminal that you want to take a look at. It's also configured in Lua, so it's kind of hitting double duty there, so a lot of people also like Lua, so win-win, right? So me personally, I don't like Lua all that much, so the configuration was a bit of a mess, and we'll talk about that later, but if you like Lua, the configuration file is expansive when it, when it comes to options that you can do. And we'll talk more about that as we dive in. So first, let me actually take you to my desktop and show you what WESTERM looks like. And as you can see, first of all, obligatory NeoFetch to show that I'm still doing the challenge. Next thing I should say is that it does have tabs. So if you are someone who uses tabs inside the terminal, WESTERM has you, has you covered there. It also has splits. So if we do super... Alt, or excuse me, if we do Control Alt Shift and then the number five, it will split vertically. If we do Control Alt Shift and the quotation mark button, it will split horizontally. So it does have a ton of features in terms of how it's laid out. You can drag this with your mouse if you wanted to make these different sizes. There's a key binding to change the size of those if you wanted to change the size. You can navigate between them using the arrow keys i believe control shift and the arrow keys navigate between these is what it's supposed to be control shift and the arrow key is what's supposed to do it but it doesn't work for me so much maybe i'm just doing something wrong there and, oh that's because i'm pressing the wrong buttons there we go helps if you're t if you're pressing the right buttons who knew anyways it has that functionality so if you use tmux one of the Features of Tmux that is really awesome in my, you know, limited experience with Tmux is the ability to split your panes and have different sessions running. So it's possible to do that right inside WESTERM as well, which is fantastic. In terms of other features, it ha supports the terminal panes, which we just showed you. It has tabs and windows on local and remote hosts. So if you're using this on a remote host, it will work as well. It has native mouse support and scrollback support, so you don't have to build any of that stuff in. I don't, they really shouldn't have to say that those are features, but I will blame the ST, you know, terminal, the simple terminal for all that because that doesn't have it built in. It supports ligatures, color emoji, font fallback, and true color and dynamic color scheme switching, which I'll show you here in a bit. It supports hyperlinks, and when I say it supports hyperlinks, you would think, well, you know, that's not that big a deal. Every terminal emulator has the ability to support hyperlinks in some form or fashion. When it comes to hyperlinks in WESTERM, you have a ton of control over what is hyperlinked, how it works, whether or not things that are usually hyperlinked aren't hyperlinked, and so on. And it gives you the ability, if you know regex, to basically make anything you want a hyperlink, which is really cool. Another feature that is really cool, if you can get it to work, is searchable scrollback. Now, from what I've experienced over using this for a little while, it's not as cool as you'd hope it would be. Now, maybe I'm just using it wrong, which is 100% possible, I would say. The searchable scrollback function should allow you to search through your previous history inside of the session that you're currently in. In theory. Like I said, that's the way in theory. Now, I have in this particular session several different commands that I've run. So I should be able to hit control F and search for LS and it actually does sh highlight LS there. But if you if I hit if I clear this and then do control F and do LS, it doesn't. So the scroll back functionality doesn't really work. I'm not sure why. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Like I have to have like a page up or something like that because they, they mentioned that in the the key bindings here somewhere. Oh, it's down here. Moving to different um, search terms that you've searched for should be able to be done with up arrows, control P, page up, page down, things like that. Uh, but we know LS is there, but it doesn't actually work, and I'm not sure why. And just regular scroll back, which should be a default feature, doesn't actually work. So you saw that I had, like I had LS, I had uh, LS there, and I had Echo Hello World there, and I should be able it, if I can hit Control L usually, and I scroll up, it should just should take me back to those things that I just had, but it doesn't. So if I open up you know a regular console here, and I do the same thing, Echo Hello World. 
you know, and then I, I clear it. I should be able to. Maybe it's just my particular. You know, now that I see this, it must just be something that's going on with my system. Why that's not working? Because you should be able to scroll back many different lines, and I have it set set in the configuration file. So if I show you the configuration file, which we'll talk about here in a minute, I have scroll back lines to set to thirty five hundred. So it should, you know, go back. Now I'm guessing if I type in bash here and go to the bash shell and then do ls, do echo world like so, and then do an ls and then scroll back. No, it still doesn't do it in bash either. So it's not a zsh problem. Um, live troubleshooting with Matt. Who knows? But anyways, that feature is really cool. So if, you, if we exit here and then do Control Shift F, you can see this bot, this this bar that appears at the bottom. You should be able to, if it's working on your system, search through the previous history of that particular shell. I don't know whether or not it will search through anything previous to that shell's creation or not. So that is something that I'm unsure of. But the fact that it has this feature, if it can, you can get it working, is pretty cool. Other features include the ability to render underline, double, double underline, italic, bold, and strike through, something that most terminals don't actually do. So if you're looking at like a, a, a documents, you should be able to see some of that stuff that you wouldn't normally be able to see. It's configured via a Lua configuration file, which I'll show you and talk about here in a minute, but it also has hot reloading. Now, one of the features that I really enjoyed about Alacrity was the ability to change the configuration file, save it, and then have all instances of the terminal actually source that new configuration file, which is means that any changes that you've made take place live immediately after you save the file. This is particularly cool because it does have dynamic t color schemes inside of WesTerm, and they have almost 800 different color schemes included, and all you have to do is change one particular line. So if I take you back here and show you the configuration file that I've created so far, it has this line, color scheme equals Batman. If I change that to Dracula and then go back to here, you should be able to see that it changed to the Dracula color scheme. So the ability to change that dynamically is really, really cool and something that I've missed in the terminals that I've used since I moved away from Alacrity. Now, there are several other features, most of them more useful for developers. So it has Xterm style selection of text with a mouse with a with shift insert. It has the ability to be an SSH client with native tabs. It has the ability to connect to serial ports for embedded and Arduino work, things like single board computers and stuff like that. It has term for some iTerm for iTerm 2 stuff, for some kitty graphics and Sixel graphics support. So there are a ton of features here. And I highly recommend you go into the documentation because the documentation is really, really good. And in, and in fact, I would say that it is a necessity for you to go to the documentation and actually see because by default there is not a configuration file for you. And now this is not unusual for there not to be a configuration file automatically created. A lot of terminal emulators and programs don't do this. Usually however there is an example somewhere. Either it's on your computer somewhere or you can find it online somewhere. For WesTerm there is no default configuration file. This is my biggest, absolute biggest downside for this terminal emulator. There's not a default configuration file. So if I show you this. I created this. Okay, you can put it in .config slash westerm, and then the the document is called westerm.lua, so it's configured in Lua. So if you know Lua, you should have no problems whatsoever. And the documentation is actually really good. So if you go into the configuration, it shows you basically everything you need to know to create your configuration file. It doesn't do a fantastic job of explaining why you need some stuff. So for example, apparently every configuration file needs a return line inside of it somewhere so if you're going to have a configuration file it has to have that one thing in there otherwise it won't work and it doesn't explain why I'm not sure why there's also this line here that it says you probably should have but it doesn't explain why so the the documentation does fall down in some places and, and I'm assuming that if you know Lua, which I do not know Lua I know very very little Lua I'm assuming that if you know Lua you probably know why that portion there is actually you know necessary but if you're a you know not a Lua programmer maybe you don't know why so there's no default configuration file and the developers seem to be very against ever having one so if you are someone who prefers to have a default configuration file to work from which is exactly like me I want a configuration file that I can go through and you know you know, learn line by line, right? It's much easier for me to learn a configuration file that way instead of trolling through the documentation. It's just the way that I tend to learn. And 
unfortunately that's not available here now there are other options for you you can go find someone else's configuration file and learn from that that's probably what i'll end up doing if i stick with this or you can just go through the documentation like that like the developers want you to so that's the biggest downside of west term no default configuration file and honestly for me still kind of a deal breaker i was pretty upset with it when i first found that that, that out but We'll move past it. So let's talk a little bit about the configuration file itself. All the documentation here is, like I said, fairly well filled out. It shows you how to launch programs, set the fonts, font and shaping, which I still have no clue what that's all about. I don't know what Harf Buzz actually is. I've never heard of it before, but apparently it's a feature. It allows you to see how to set key bindings if you want. Now, the thing that they've kind of buried, and I wish, really wish they had linked to this on the front page or on the, you know the top page where they're talking about features, they should link to this page here because this page here is super important. And that's because this is the list of all the default key bindings. So if you want to know, you know like for example, how to create a, a split, you know, and you didn't happen to see that there at the beginning, you would have to come to this table here in order to actually see what that key binding is. And there are a ton of default key bindings. And obviously all these can be remapped with the configuration file if you want. I really do, like I said, wish that they would have this linked on their features page. It'd be super helpful because I've actually made this video one time already got 20 minutes in harping on them for not having a central place for all their key bindings and as i was going through the documentation as i'm doing now i stumbled on upon 4.7 buried inside of this particular drop down and boom there it was and i had to start over again so maybe i'm a little salty for the fact that i had to redo this video but i would really like if they would link that in on the front page or on their their features page or whatever Maybe if it's even maybe it's even there and I'm just you know blinder and a bat who knows, but anyways this is probably the most important page in their documentation. I will say this though about their default key bindings they are way too reliant on the super key. Okay, the super key is a is a key that is used extensively in tiling window managers by most people. Okay, now I understand a lot of people use Alt. You're weirdos. I can't help it. You're weirdos. Everyone uses the super key. It even says super right on my keyboard. Okay. It's the Windows key for those of you who don't know. I'm, I'm not judging people who don't. Okay. So I am just a little bit. But anyways, the point is, is that the super key is used by a lot of people for their key bindings for their window manager. And because I'm a window manager refugee, even though I'm using Plasma right now, a lot of my key bindings that I've set up over the last three days since I moved to Redcore are all things that I've been used to in a tiling window manager, and all those use Super. So I, you know, like Super D brings up K Runner, which you know is what I'm using instead of Rovi right now. You know, Super Q closes the window. Super One Two Three Four moves between workspaces, and if you if you go down here, you'll see Super One Two Three Four activates tabs inside of the terminal, and that means that they're conflicting. So I really, really, really wish that they hadn't ever used Super as one of their modifier keys because that means that if I were to use this I'd have to go and remap all of those or I'd have to change the key binding inside of Plasma or whatever desktop environment slash window manager that I'm in. That'd be a pain in the rear end and probably not something that I'm actually willing to do simply because that's a lot of freaking work. So that's the number two downside to this. And really those are the only two that I have. The lack of a default configuration file and the fact that they use super extensively inside of their default key bindings. I really wish they didn't do that, and I really wish they had a default configuration file, which should make it actually easier to change the key bindings, because you just go in there and add them to whatever section for key bindings that they had in the default config, but that section doesn't exist. That means you have to go to the, the documentation, create it inside of your own configuration file, and it's just, it's a mess. So, it does seem like I'm being overly negative, and maybe I am, just a little bit, but those two things really kind of peeved me off just a little bit. So, let me kind of wrap this up in terms of overall use. It is a good terminal emulator. I like that it has splits. I like that it has tabs. I don't care for the, the default key bindings, but those are theoretically changeable. So that's not that big of a deal. And it is very, very fast. So I will say that I have discovered some bugs. So you guys saw me earlier. The scroll back bug doesn't actually work. But I'm guessing that that's not a Wes term thing. It apparently doesn't work in console either. So that's a me problem. Not sure what's going on there. Uh, I thought maybe it was a bash or a ZSH thing. Maybe I didn't have ZSH history enabled. But it didn't work in bash either. So that's weird. I'm assuming that if I figured out that particular bug. 
or system wide bug, I should say, that the search scroll, the scroll back search would actually work, which is a really cool feature. I've never actually seen that. I'm like, I'm assuming that that feature is in other terminals, and I've just never even thought that it should exist before. But now that I know about it, I'm going to be searching for that feature in every terminal that I use because it's really cool to be able to search back through your history very, very easily. And now I know there's a command to do that inside of the command line, but to have it built into your terminal with a key binding was pretty cool. So West Term overall, a very good terminal emulator with some issues, I would say. Uh, if the developer happens to see this, I understand, I read your thread on GitHub about your disinterest in creating a, a default configuration file, and I understand your reasons and things behind that. They, they talked about how a, con a default configuration file would not be updated, and, and usually a lot of that stuff is commented out, so it won't be testable either, so I understand that part, but relying on people to create a configuration file through a segmented documentation where they have to go step by step by step is asking a little bit much for a lot of people and it just is a barrier to entry for you know your terminal and it just it's not very good uh, but teach their own for me personally honestly it wouldn't be that big of a deal because i'd probably can create my own configuration file eventually anyways but the default key bindings is the bigger issue <laughs> don't use the super key because a lot of other things use the super key too, and they all came before you. So uh, those are my thoughts on WesTerm. If you have thoughts on WesTerm, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. Links for Libera Pay and YouTube will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.